Hello, beautiful, amazing, fantastic world. And you, beautiful, beautiful individual. Today, I would like to speak about... Well, this is pretty reasonable and, well, obvious when you really think about it. But since we do not immerse ourselves in these kinds of thinking, let's go ahead and immerse ourselves in it a little. Warmth of love, love, true love, not sensuality, not being smitten, not having a crush, love. All of these things are, well, prerequisite for love, in a sense. It was kind of the first germs that was invited to our physicality. Now, love that is higher than physical sensuality, like understanding, like trying to go inside another human being to feel how they feel, to think how they think, to see what they see through, well, objective exploration, objective compassion. It warms up the soul and spirit. It makes it mobile. It makes it encompassing. It makes it embracing in a sense. It allows you to feel safe. It is because I do not stand and sit with judgment in my heart and degrading you in my being. I always think of you as a fellow human sibling. And from there I go, well, based on what every individual is sharing, I will then thereafter take them as they come every time. Of course, the more they show themselves as loving, caring, nurturing, the more I will remember them as such. And the opposite is also true. Of course, it, uh, we, it is all about forgive, giving the guy, giving the person a chance if it is, well, time and place to do so. We do not always need to do so once we have been affirmed that this is not healthy, then we will slowly but surely pull away. But if we are to truly give a human being respect, it is to meet any human being, including your family, friends, parents, as completely new beings in a sense. See what comes out. Is it the same as always? Is it something different? Are they allowing themselves to explore and express themselves? And so on. If you are cold, detached, and do not care, ignorant, arrogant, and so on. That is cold, cold feelings. Cooling, hardening feelings. Feelings that makes you more or less like a block of ice or a block of rock. It is the opposite. You become more and more sclerotic out, uh, out of, well, hatred, disdain, lies, manipulation. Pain and suffering uh, imposed on others. And especially consciously. Now that is where you mess up your soul. But if you are consciously, actively, every day, trying to work into your being true love, the higher hierarchy is constantly giving us this influx if we are allowing them to give it to us, allowing ourselves to receive it. It re requires us to have a complete open faith to this. It requires us to have a certain bravery to know that what we are doing is, in the end, fruitful, beautiful, good, truthful. Yeah, I think I said truthful. Well, truthful twice. And, well, nurturing, gentle, warm, like a parent, which is what it should feel like. Once you feel like a parent to yourself, you will feel like a parent to others. Because you are nurturing yourself, instructing yourself, mentoring yourself. You're giving yourself the proper uh, healing and health substances and so resources to make your being as optimal and as nourished and beautiful as possible. Not in, this, not in the surface level sense. Not in the shallow sense. It is as deep as the universe. Remember, we are a microcosm in a macrocosm, so whatever you explore within you, in the spiritual, you also explore outside. 
in the physical. So if you do not allow lower beings, beings that might give you fear, nervousness, pains, and concerns and doubts and such, if you do not allow them to come into your consciousness affecting your being, believe me, you have the power to banish such beings down into the subconscious again. But if you do not allow them to come into your being even alone, they will not come into you in the physical either, because it is a reflection, you see. So the more you work upon yourself, the more outside world will reflect it. You will see the world more beautiful, you will see individuals more beautiful, you will see cultures and any kind of, well, everything human is beautiful. Of course, the animal kingdom, the plant kingdom and the mineral kingdom is by default to me beautiful because they don't have much of a choice in the matter, you see. They are enchanted spirits in a sense. The animals, you see, before we came, became physical, we were a group soul. And this group soul had bull, human, eagle, and lion nature, in a sense. These group souls, the animal group souls, separated from us, so only the man was left. What was in place of the separation is the faculties and the abilities, spiritual abilities of animals left behind. And the physical forms of animals are more or less ancestors and bigger brothers of us that couldn't wait in the spiritual world to develop further enough. So they crystallized in a certain instinct, in a certain passion imprisoned in that role you see every single group soul of animal species have their role to play as that species they they can't go outside of it, it unless outer physical circumstances dictates that they have to like ecological destruction and so on and changes but anim but human beings now we have the ego the ego allows us to work upon our being Upon us, upon unfolding and, well, growing that sun, that spark that Christ gave us through his sacrifice, to make it shine up like a sun again, to flare up this earth, to become a star over time. It takes time, it takes lifetimes. But that is what is development. We are first in more or less a germ-like state, then we are in a planetary state, then we blow up and become more star-like over time. And then in the end we become a star system. And we are a conglomerate, a community of beings that is upholding and keeping in alive this system. It is not a mechanical system, it is an organized, living evolution. The whole universe is in a living evolution and it, you get that living feeling of it. Because even you, as you develop as human beings, so does our lower, the lower beings and so do the higher beings. There is no one that is completely and utterly perfect in itself except the Godhead. And the Godhead is constantly unfolding itself still by, well, creating. And by creating and exploring itself, we get to know it and us you see but it takes we cannot be impatient we cannot be in a hurry we have to be as stable and as steady and as thorough as possible meticulous the more meticulous and thorough you are the less well chance it is that you might make a huge mistake that might well bite your ass later it is all about upholding a certain standard, a, st a certain dignity as a human being. Love. And love includes, warms up, expands, moves. Coldness, detachment, then condenses down, imprisons, shuts in. The more love and warmth you have in your heart, the more objectively we love you can see the cosmos and the earth. So you understand why there are a lot of suffering happening here. But that doesn't allow us to make a conclusion about anything because 
this is a living evolution and we are not the same in 100 or 200 years as we are now. And believe me, in the future, we will think, imagine there were, there were a time in the world where we had a mythology where we believed only to be this physical manifestation of things. It's so weird to think back on it, but hey, that is what we needed to forget the spiritual and God and the divine so that we could cultivate freedom. And again, in freedom, choose them again. No one can force you to do so. You have to find them yourself. You have to find them yourself. You have to go seek and search them out in sincerity yourself. And you know that. Of course, you can tell yourself that there is no such things. All right, but that is you. And don't judge anyone else and say that no one else can do that. There are many, 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 many people that actually have a certain feeling of the spiritual. And I wouldn't be doing this if I didn't know what I'm talking about. Seriously. Why would, I ri why would I risk speaking about something I do not do or that is not here and end up being, well, humiliating myself? No. Speak about what you do. Speak about what you know. Speak about every single little thing you immerse yourself in. When you do, you are safe because you speak about something you are well versed in. You see? And it is about that intention of sincerity, intention of honesty, intention of wishing good love and beauty on this world. When you do have that as a standard in your heart, that is where you come from. So whatever actions, thoughts, emotions that you unfold within yourself is in relation and in full alignment to that. So every action comes from love, even though people are throwing daggers at you, you still, you turn, you turn around, hey, throw here too. The thing is, if you throw a rock down a well and you don't hear a word, a, a, a single splash, does that feel satisfying to you? No, it doesn't. That's the secret. That's the secret. We know where they come from. We know what they're doing. These two beings, Lucifer and Ahriman, Lucifer the ignorant, Lucifer the don't care, Lucifer the la 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 frivolous. And then we have Ahriman, Ahriman the cold, Ahriman the detached, Ahriman the objective without a human being, Ahriman the Philistine. The purely materialistic, animalistic instincts. And also cleverness. Every animal is clever, but we are human beings. We need more than just cleverness. We need understanding, comprehension, intellect and intelligence. Spiritual intelligence. Just normally intelligence that you collect from outer physical materialistic nature is purely aramonic, atomic. What you collect and assimilate and Dabble yourself in through your imagination and the spiritual, through faith, love, hope, through, well, construct. You, it is a certain schematics to this cosmos through the hierarchy, but this is in constant motion and life, so it cannot be crystallized to a blueprint, you see? It is constantly in a certain change, although it might be a teensy, teensy small change. It is still changeless, so we cannot define the universe except for in this point in time. You see, in further future points of time, we will be different. And that is why we need to remember that we do change, shift and shape as human beings. The whole cosmos is in motion. Why should we stand still? It is all about becoming comfortable and staying stable within change. Every single... Every single force of movement and turmoil and, well, also enjoyment and beauty and warmth. Becoming acquainted with all of them. For if you run away from anything negative, anything lower beings, they will run to the other human beings. You will expel them from your being and send them out to the world to the rest of people. No, we rather shackle them, shackle them within ourselves, knowing what they're doing. 
Because if we let them go and let them fester in the background without caring what they're doing, they will come to destroy this earth. Because they don't wish good on us. They are beings that have been thrown out of their former homes to develop themselves and be redeemed through us. That in itself speaks for itself. We need to transform them by bringing the best of their faculties and personalities and shed anything that is devilish and demonic. Because what you sit left with is highly divine beings. But it is all about redeeming them. Once you redeem them, you transform yourself. Because you are a blend of these two, the dissolving and the hardening. And you have your ego in the middle, that smack middle of them. So become aware. That is where you feel every single part of them. And then it is about finding the Christ warmth, inclusion. That in itself, Lucifer will break his own wings through the compassion. He will, he will make his own downfall. Ahriman shackles himself and only scheming in the background, but he can't do anything because he has nothing to hold on to. That is why we ennoble, transform, purify, and aspire to become better human beings. When you have promised yourself you aspire to become better and promise yourself to do good on your shortcomings and flaws, you will not be ashamed of them anymore when people point them out because you can say, yeah, I know I have that flaw, but I am actively and, f and fully working towards better myself. Can you say the same? It is all about not being a hypocrite. And when you are working upon yourself, despite your flaws, you are not a hypocrite when you speak about certain activities, meditations and techniques that might help in mastering your own being. It is, of course, this is but the rudiments, the start of all of this. But we have to start somewhere, laying that first brick, laying that second brick, and then we have the start of the foundation of the wall, of the temple. And that, yeah, I always end up going, uh, coming back to Lucifer and Arman. But that is because in the occult and the esoteric sense, these two beings must be, well, known. They must be. Because none of these two are fully developed and they have immense flaws that is very, very destructive for mankind. But Lucifer also in, uh, in included and in produ uh, <laughs> Lucifer did include freedom. He is the holder of freedom, but only through the Christ can we use that freedom in love. Ariman gave us intellect, cleverness, meticulous and precise, uh, accurate intelligence. Intellect, you know, where you mathematics, geometry, uh, differentiations, detail, uh, detail picturing and so on. But without the Christ to warm up these things, you will be a flying head. You won't have a heart, you won't... Uh, the objectivity the, uh, uh, just cut out the human being. The human being is not important anymore. But the human being is the imp most important here. We are in the dab smack middle of a cosmic development. And for us to say we are so little important here because look at this huge universe and there might be so many planets that are like us and cool, cool speculations, bro. But you won't get anywhere by that. By making yourself insignificant, by making yourself unimportant like that, you become a passive bystander in your own life. You see? Don't do that. You are important. You are important as an individual. Believe me. By hiding yourself in the group soul, in the aramonic soul, you will follow along on their karma. And that is not a karma you would like to follow along with. You know that, right? Try to look forward in any of these two beings groups. Do you see any good future for any of these two? I don't. There will be far too much imbalance. That is why we need the middle. Or else the pendulum swing will just go like crazy. 
You see, if it becomes too Aram so, uh, Luciferic, we need to double over to the Aramonic. So there will be a uh, Philistine clapback. And then we will go back again to the Luciferic and have an, another Luciferic clapback. And there will go like this, like some crazy pendulum, you see? In the middle, you hold the karma stable. In the middle, you do not. It's like a completely clear water. Once you dip your toe in it, you see, boom! Then you see there come circles, there comes pulses out of it. It's the same with actions, it's the same with, well, deeds and your act of conduct, your everyday soul and spirit. And love, you must remember, love always warms, permeates, makes things moving, makes things inclusive and understanding. The other one is completely and utterly shut off. And the Christ is the one that gives us in the balance in the middle here, in the balance between freedom and cleverness and uh, intellect, between philistinism and frivolity, you have the true human being, the earthly and the cosmic. And that is what I will leave you with today. Thank you so much. I just love when I, I can probably sit talking for hours and hours and hours upon this because I have... I just, it is, you can tell by my, you can tell by my giddiness, I love this work, obviously. For you to also do that, you will come to do that if you follow along on this path, because once you have removed enough of your karmas to not feel that shame anymore, to not feel that guilt anymore, this will be a highly enjoyable journey. It is all about removing those clouds. And those clouds has to be removed by you consciously being with yourself, wishing, longing to transform, ennoble, purify, and uplift, spiritualize. May Father, Holy Spirit, Christ, Michael, the higher hierarchy, <laughs> um, our an an ancient masters of all and our ancestors, Bless, protect, guide, and love you on your beautiful, wonderful path to development. And may you find your personality and voice and expression in all of this. Love you all. Thank you so much. Goodbye.